I'm Scott Robinson. I work in the microscopy suite in the basement of the Beckman Institute. We're one of three core facilities on campus that train people to use a variety of microscopes to do research. One of the reasons that I do electron microscopy and light microscopy and all of the different things that we do, that produces images. It's very, very direct. So you're saying, I want to see a picture of this thing. And what, we're, what we want to be able to do is allow you to get a picture of that thing at better and better resolution, better and better ultrastructural preservation. So one piece of the equipment um, in the microscopy suite that we've been using a lot lately is the high pressure freezing machine. And presently what we're using it for is to take nematodes and freeze them so quickly that they are frozen in vitreous ice. Vitreous means glassy. And so what we're doing is we're trying to freeze samples so fast that they just form a glassy ice. It means that it doesn't have any crystalline structure to it. For example, if you took cells, you just stuck them in the freezer, or even if you dropped them in liquid nitrogen itself, it wouldn't freeze the cells fast enough and they would form little crystals and then the crystals will destroy the internal structure of the cell. So there will be different places where the cell looks like it's ripped out where a crystal has formed. So if we can do high pressure freezing, we can get around those problems. What you're doing is you're freezing a sample at as much as 33,000 psi, sometimes a little bit more, and at the instant that all of that pressure hits the sample, you're also freezing it at a liquid nitrogen temperature. And so the hydrogens that's naturally in any biological sample don't have time to rotate and align with each other as would happen with normal ice. So you freeze these samples so fast that they're frozen into vitreous ice. And then, with the freeze substitution part of the process, we can take these samples that we've frozen and we can embed these samples in plastic. So we'll be able to maintain that ultrastructural preservation at room temperature. That means that they're basically fixed forever. So Ursula is doing the, the really difficult part of the work. So she's taking a little aluminum disc that's three millimeters in diameter, and she'll take a batch of E. coli, and she'll smear them into the depression in this little disc. And then she'll grab a bundle of live nematodes, and the nematodes get all excited because they eat bacteria, and so they think it's lunchtime, basically. So they're going to burrow into that little pool of bacteria and then we'll put another aluminum cap on top of that cap. It's not because we're trying to trick the nematodes into having a little meal and not paying attention to what's happening. We're putting this layer of E. coli in there so we have this solid biomass. The nematodes dive into the biomass. Now what we have is this solid structure that doesn't have spaces in it and we've sandwiched it between these aluminum plates and then we've frozen it super, super fast, high pressure freezing, there aren't little gaps in there to cause problems. We go through, a, everything in electron microscopy is really, really tricky. And every time you add a functionality to this, like high pressure freezing, you're just making it still more complicated. But the thing that we're trying to reach is this perfect ultrastructural preservation so that when we do transmission electron microscopy we get absolutely beautiful realistic ultrastructural images of the cell. It's not just pretty pictures so we want the pictures to show the function as much as we possibly can. We want to be able to show you the thing as it really looks. So it's it's really really exciting and it's and it's actually really really simple if you think of it that way.